Coming up now is by the numbers. Today on By the Numbers, we narrow our gaze further on the greater Accra region and why it has piqued the interest of the two leading candidates in the campaign over the last two months. Home to a number of swing constituencies, the dynamics in the region continue to fascinate political watchers. Today, though, we'll look at the Ledger Cuckoo constituency, a known battleground uh, that would go down to the wire. Let's now bring in Maya Nagbata, who is at the score screen, to tell us what's happening with these swing regions. Yes, uh, swing regions, but we, we like to call them battle battle mm. areas in, in the lead up to the 2024 elections. We'll get into the Jokuku, but these eight constituencies we're projecting into December 2024 will be crucial battlegrounds. But interestingly, the NDC holds seven out of this eight. Uh, Ama Saman has been known to be NDC for, mm -hmm. for some time. They switched, gave uh, that constituency to the NPP. Lejokuku until, uh, what, 2016 was a swing region as well because of, of the trajectory and, and, and the way it's, mm -hmm. it's gone. And then Adenta as well continued to flip-flop every now and then. And then Klote Kole, which has gone to either sides, really. And so this is what it's looking like. These are the constituencies mm -hmm. which really were expecting it to go right down to the mm -hmm. wire in terms of the margins being close and each candidate having to overwork themselves uh, to be able to, to uh, clinch the various constituencies listed here. Mm, I see. So uh, let's zero in now on uh, Ledger Kuku. Uh, very interesting uh, dynamics in that constituency where I used to you know, live. But uh, we see that, you know, the, the, how they behave in the presidential elections, very similar to how they behave in the parliamentary election. If you misbehave as a candidate, you're not getting another chance from them. But what do the numbers say? Well, the numbers has said one thing in terms of the presidential elections has been swing up until this point. Mm -hmm. 2016, from there on in, it's looked a more NDC constituency since then because the NDC won in 2016 uh, in that particular constituency but lost uh, the general elections. Mm -hmm. They won again in 2020 but lost the general elections as well. But based on what we're seeing and what the projections suggest, it looks like the NDC might just on the presidential front be able to clinch this particular uh, constituency mm. again that's what we're seeing, but a swing constituency up until 2016. And this is the presidential race. What, what is the projection of win in the 2024 uh, you know, election for the NDC in the Ledger Kuku constituency? Well, it's, it's looking somewhat 54.9%. That's, that's what the numbers are suggesting mm -hmm. at this particular point in time, but it's still quite early days yet in terms of being able to really work down the numbers to the barest minimums. There's a, there's a saying out there quite clearly that fear delegates. The polls continue to come up every now and then, mm -hmm. but it will all be determined by the constituents on the ground and what their choice of a candidate would be eventually. And if indeed 54.9% shows up, that's an improvement on the performance of the NDC on, on last year. Because on, on, last on, year on the, 20, on on the, the last election, excuse me. Last yes. elections as well. Indeed. Let, let's go into the parliamentary yes. now, which is of obvious interest to a lot of people. And so if you know the Ledger Kuku constituency quite well, you know that they haven't maintained a member of parliament since, what, 1996, 1992, mm -hmm. you call it what? They have always insisted or always changed uh, their member of parliament. True. Be it on the same ticket or from the same party or what, it has always changed. And so we see that from 96 up until 2020, there has not been one individual mm. who's been able to win the this, uh, win this seat and retain that. But it looks like that might change in the lead up to the 2024 elections because mm, the so? two individuals who are going up against each other, the incumbent, uh, who is the member of parliament uh, at this particular point in time, Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin, 
Nate Aiku. He is the incumbent member of parliament. He beat this man and the current health minister, Dr. Bernard Okoboy, in mm -hmm. 2020 to clinch this particular seat. For the very first time, if anything is to go by and if the fourth Republican uh, politics is anything to consider, mm -hmm. Lejokuku will have a member of parliament repeated, mm -hmm. be it whether or not uh, they lost and have returned or they are winning again. We'll Either have way. A member of parliament going from, from that particular constituency into parliament for the second time. Very first time that will be happening mm -hmm. based on the numbers and the battle that will be between Bernard Okoboy and then Benjamin Natiaiku. And then on the presidential front as well, we've seen what the projection suggests that John Mahama might just be, be clinching that particular constituency. But I believe the vice president will have something to say in relation to that in terms of wanting to improve his numbers in the greater Accra region. And which better area to do that than in Lejokuku, which has mm. been known up until 2016 to be one of the very interesting regions in terms of a swing right, and right. the expectations from here on in. Kimini. Well, you know, I wish the candidates well because Le Lejokuku voters are not like any other voters in the greater Accra region. We saw the euphoria around Dr. Bernard Okubo in the lead up to the 2020 elections and yet he lost. They Absolutely. didn't give him another chance. So let's see what happens in the 2024 elections. We look forward to it as Thank always. you for bringing us the numbers. We'll bring you more battlegrounds in subsequent broadcasts. Uh, right now, uh, your election command center will take a quick break.